The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. And boy, oh boy, we have breaking news for the first time in what feels like forever. Damian Lillard is on the move. Can you believe it? It actually happened. And he's, it, it seemed like it was going to take even longer. And he's now going to be playing the Pistons quite often. Damian Lillard is a Milwaukee Buck. That just sounds weird. It does, but him coming from Portland, another small market, it yeah. kind of it kind of fits. Yeah, kind of fits. Milwaukee's grown a bit though with Giannis and the championship and all that, but um, it's interesting. So the details of the trade are Damian Lillard getting traded, of course, to the Bucks. Um, Portland is getting Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, Kamani Kamara, who's a throw-in prospect. Yeah. Um. Milwaukee's 2029 unprotected first round pick and unprotected Milwaukee swap rights in 2028 and 2030. I can't believe we're talking about 2030. Listen, my my little brother might be a draft prospect around that time. So (laughs) maybe they could pick him up around then. My little brother's in the seventh grade. (laughs) It's it's wild to be talking about 2030. Um, The Suns are getting Yusuf Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nazir Little, and Keon Johnson, which I think is actually like, Pretty solid for them. Um, the Suns kind of needing a little bit of depth. Maybe yeah, that they helps they already figured out a way to put together a good a solid bench at least. Yeah, through free agency and yeah, adding Grayson Allen and and Nasir Little, mm-hmm. both of those could help. Yeah, and I think Yusuf Nurkic will put in more effort than DeAndre Ayton did. Um, yeah. Portland getting DeAndre Ayton just adds another young piece to their young roster. Um, from what we've heard so far, Drew Holiday will probably get moved again, um, which always stinks for those kind of guys because Drew Holiday's a really good player. But it makes sense. Yeah, I yeah, mean, Scoot Henderson and um, the other guard for Portland. Once again, forgetting names every week. This is what I do. Anthony Simons. Yeah. Those two are the what seem to be the future at the one and two for Portland. Yeah. Um. So, Drew Holiday. He'll probably be leftovers for people that didn't get into the Lillard sweepstakes. Uh, most likely somebody like Miami. Um, if you're a Miami fan right now, because they were rumored to be the front runners for a long time, are you upset? How upset are you? I I think you are kind of upset. You're still a contender, but things are looking uh, pretty... Uh, not great. <laughs> Things yeah. are, are looking not great right es- now. Especially when it seemed like in that original trade for Miami, they needed to trade like all of their young pieces. Yeah, including Tyler Hero. That's what Portland was It seemed like they for. wouldn't budge on yeah. that one. Uh, so it's wild to see. I mean, this wasn't like a crazy haul, and there wasn't like – there's not really any meaningful picks that we know of. I mean, down the line, they could be meaningful picks. But right now, we have no idea. So, yeah, I, I can't wait to see Heat Twitter later on um, to see their reactions. Because Yeah, I, I feel like they are going to try very hard to get Drew Holiday. Yeah, I they're, think they, they have, are going they would to try to. hard. It would be an uh, – I don't know if I'd say incredible. He would fit perfectly with, the, with what they do, so it would be incredible for them. Yeah. But overall, like, seeing Drew and Jimmy – Jimmy is a superstar sometimes. Right. And other times he's just a regular all star. Drew is a borderline all star. When other teams see them, it's they're gonna be afraid. Yeah. Cause the the level of defense and intensity from them two at the one and two, if you have to play them, it, it's just it's a, it's ridiculous. Yeah. On a nightly basis, most teams won't be able to go as hard as they go. Right. They can theoretically take out your two best players. Yeah. Um, which not many teams would be able to do. 
Uh, but we'll wait to see if anything uh, resolves around that. But let's get to the, the main focus. Damian Lillard to the Bucks. Are the Bucks the favorite? I mean, I'd, at least in the East, yes. Denver is prob- probably still going to be favored by some people. But the the hype is all going to be on Milwaukee. Right. Like, Giannis was able to win one. Some people put an asterisk on it. I don't think either of us really do. Yeah. I mean, people get hurt in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Things go in your favor. That's how the playoffs go. Giannis got a ring. Drew Holiday got a ring. Mm -hmm. They, Milwaukee won a championship, and that was great. But Giannis made it clear by not re-signing very quickly and letting the organization know that I need an I need an assurance basically that we're going to be all in on winning all these championships as many as possible. And they made the move. Mm-hmm. And now that the move has been made, there will be me- all types of media hype. This will be all every debate show will be talking about this. Are the Bucks the immediate favorite? A bunch of people will be saying yes. There will be a lot of media hype. Yeah. But the Denver Nuggets should be the predicted favorite once again. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I, I'm just not there yet. Now, obviously, we have no idea how they're gonna mesh, how they're gonna, how it's gonna work. But on paper, I don't know if this theoretically makes them a better team. And I'm not saying that it makes them better offensively, right? But that doesn't mean as a whole, and which means defense. And like, Dame Lillard is definitely a better overall player than Drew Holiday, but Drew Holiday just. Drew was almost invaluable to that. He team. seems yeah. to be more of a system player that fits perfect for Milwaukee and yeah. what they needed outside of Giannis. Now, the one problem that Milwaukee has is they don't have a ton of outside shooting. So this could mend that, but you're going to lose a lot defensively. And as much as people hate Grayson Allen, he's a pest. Playing hard was half of his job. Right. The other half was hitting shots when he's open. Yeah. So. There's something they're losing there too. Not obviously not as much as Drew Holiday, but I'm just curious how the fit is all going to work. Um, it definitely, like you said, it makes their offense better. But I think the biggest problem for me last year with the Bucks was their depth was just not there, and they didn't really resolve that by getting Damian Lillard. Um, so if their plan is to just outscore people, maybe maybe they're changing their style of game. That that could totally be a thing now. Um, but it's it's they it's, also have a new coach, so th- that's right. something we also yeah yeah that's something we haven't taken into account. It, it's mostly a wait and see for me, but right out the gate, I don't I don't know if it gets them quite over the hump as as if like if Lillard went to Miami, I think that puts Miami up over the hump because of the pieces that they have. But the pieces that Milwaukee have, I don't necessarily see it at the at the moment. So. It's a fun. It's a fun thing to see. It, it'll be nice, honestly, for the East to see more of a superstar, because <laughs> it seems like the East is kind of dwindling right now. Um, and again, the Pistons are going to have to face Lillard a lot now, uh, being in the same division. So that'll be interesting. Um, yeah. Before Before we go, I'll, I will say, as long as Giannis and Brooke Lopez are on the court, they will be fine defensively. Right. And then when Brook Lopez comes out, Bobby Porters comes in, and he's a good defender too. Yeah. So the paint won't be a major problem. Now, like guarding the wings and leaving people open, we'll see how that works. Yeah. Chris Middleton is coming off an injury. Pat Connison isn't the greatest defender. He plays hard, but. They have Jay Crowder, but he's another year older. Yeah. So the paint will be fine. Giannis and Brook Lopez are two of the better defenders in the NBA. Yeah. Like you said, they'll just have to figure things out as a whole playing team defense. Right. And uh, again, I mean, having two of the best, two of the hardest players to guard in the NBA and Damian Lillard and Giannis. Yeah. <laughs> one on the inside, one on the outside. It's terrifying. That also does make sense. So. Like, who who do you key on as an NBA team? You're, I, le- you're leaving somebody. I think you have. Somebody's to. strength is going to be, like, there. Yeah. I, I think You have to pick your poison. I think that's where you have to. You almost play, in in my theory, you play the Bucks the same way you always have. You let Giannis do his thing. You don't let Lillard do his thing. Because I mm. think I think Giannis 
because he again he's still not an outside shooter. He's more of a bully ball kind of guy. At times we saw it back in the day, like people always compare Giannis to Shaq. Sometimes you just let Shaq get his because he's impossible to stop. Giannis is at that point where he's so hard to stop. I think you just key on everybody else. And if you can stop Damian Lillard, then I think that's your best bet. Because then you're not you're giving up twos rather than threes. This day and age in the NBA, that just to me it makes more sense. Yeah, but it's also it's incredibly hard because yeah, I think at this point we can honestly say Damian Lillard is like the most dangerous heat up player in the league. Right. Like he he can get forty without really getting like extremely hot. Yes. It also, he can go for 50 or 60 when he really starts heating up. It also opens up more of a pick-and-roll kind of game with Giannis and Damian Lillard. Um, Drew Holiday can do it because um, he's he's pretty good getting to the basket. But Damian Lillard he's adds that extra thing. thing where if you go under a screen, he's shooting the three. So, yeah, it, it just adds a little bit more to their pick-and-roll game probably. Logo threes in Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. What a time to be alive. Right. So, fun time to be a Milwaukee fan. Um, Portland, like we said, they're still kind of, I don't know what they're, they're retooling, I guess still yeah. with, with Scoot Henderson, I think Portland fans should be encouraged. Yeah. And like having Deandre Ayton, do you have guys that you can yeah. put stock in? Shaden Sharp, uh, Anthony Simons, like we said, like they'll, they'll be good. Yeah. Um, and especially if they can get something for Drew Holiday. Um, and then, like I said, for the Suns, I, I think the Suns kind of got a nice deal out of this. I agree. Um, for basically just DeAndre Ayton. Um, they got Yusuf Nurkic, which... As long as he's healthy. Right. I, I like him more than DeAndre Ayton when he's I healthy. think that's an upgrade. Grayson Allen and Nazir Little give them a little bit of extra uh, bench depth. So maybe that's a sneaky move uh, for the Suns to get involved. Um, Yeah, I, I think that's the majority of it. Crazy wild trade that we haven't seen. And the NBA, they're... They're getting ready for preseason and stuff. That's yeah. right around the corner. Um, okay, moving on to college football. The big the big week. Yeah, there were some big matchups this last weekend. Some pretty good games. Um Michigan and Michigan State, they they did exactly what we expected. Michigan beat Rutgers. Yeah, we figured. We just got a little notification that the Heat are interested in Drew Holiday. No yeah. <laughs> no surprise there. Mm-hmm. Um First quarter against Rutgers, Michigan looked a little, a little shaky, made a little nervous. Yeah. The first play, Rutgers hits a slant, <laughs> goes like seventy. Yeah, caught him off balance. Happens last last year. I, I'm pretty sure yeah, I brought this up. Rutgers got up to like a 17-14 lead and were, was leading at the end of the first half. Yeah, last year they ended up winning by like thirty plus. Mm-hmm. This year, Rutgers got out to a seven nothing lead. Michigan quickly took control after that. Uh, Michigan State uh, stomped by Maryland. Uh, not a good look. Uh, yeah, and Mel Tucker, it looks like he's officially going to be fired. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they will get Iowa this week, which will be... Eh. This might be a ugly game yeah. because Iowa's coming off a 31 nothing loss to Penn State. Yeah. Their offense looks awful once again. Kirk Ferentz is just letting his son, Brian Ferentz, ruin everything... <laughs> That resembles an offense mm-hmm. for Iowa, and it, it's, it's just not good. Yeah. Like, Cade McNamara isn't fully healthy. It, I'll, I'll leave it on this stat. Iowa's receivers have a combined 14 catches for the season. Yeah. It's four games in. Yeah, it's not 14 pretty. catches. And they brought in a few transfers to try and help. Mm-hmm. That's what Brian Ferentz does. He kills your hopes and dreams. So, yeah, lo- looking forward to that Iowa-Michigan State game at 7.30. Yeah. Um, the big game of the weekend for me was Florida State-Clemson. Really? Yeah. Not Notre Dame-Ohio State? No. Okay. I mean, I kind of forgot well, you, about it. you said for you. I'll be honest, I kind of forgot about Ohio <laughs> State-Notre Dame, so by then I was clocked out okay. of my college football time. Um, and then my brother texted me and said, I won a bunch of money off Ohio State. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. Um, the Florida State-Clemson game was more – fun yeah I, uh, yeah honestly the, i i mean the ending of ohio state was cool yeah but also it wasn't well we'll get to it uh florida state clemson back and forth all game clemson basically blew it in my opinion they i don't i don't know what they were doing um but florida state won it in overtime and uh 
Of course, Keon Coleman, once again, catching two touchdowns, looking good. That can, catch he made in overtime was just sick. Yeah. Just like, over that was like Randy Moss type stuff. Yeah. Drop it right over your shoulder, he just snatches it like it's nothing. Yeah. And to be fair, like to give Florida State their props, they've kind of struggled the last two games a little bit. Um, but they were able to stop Will Shipley, who's kind of the, the go guy for Clemson. And uh, that kind of stymied Clemson's offense a little bit. Yeah, Clemson was still able to make some plays on offense, which kept them in the game. But right. it's still clear that they don't have the game-breaking guy like they've had in the past decade mm-hmm. in the long line of receivers. They don't have that guy that can take over a game. Right. So when they're in a tight game, it's going to stay tight because they, they can't just take that next punch. Yeah. It was a fun one that came down to the wire. Yeah. Um, we mentioned Ohio State, Notre Dame. Um, Ohio State wins it at basically the buzzer. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the reason that I mentioned that it's not as exciting as you might think is if you go back and watch the tape. Notre Dame had 10 players on the field. <laughs> Notre Dame had 10 and players. And the left side was like oh, completely wide open. Notre Dame had 10 players on the field, not for the last play, the last two. Who plays? Marcus Freeman doing doing a great job. Doing a bang up job. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. Um pretty rough. So as much as like Ohio State fans are, are happy about it, I I don't know. If you go if you go back and watch that tape, it's just it's not it's not as exciting as it seemed in the moment. Listen, both teams are very good teams. I don't think either of them are like what they're going to be near the end of the season. Yeah. Both had their moments. Both struggled offensively at times. Notre Dame can only score 14 points. They've been going off on everybody else. Right. Ohio State dropped a bomb on Western Kentucky, and now they're back. Notre Dame has a really good defense, but you expect Ohio State's offense to be a little bit more explosive. Kyle right. McCord is still getting, uh, trying to get comfortable in his position as Ohio State's quarterback. Yeah. Travion Henderson had some good runs. Yeah, it was just two teams feeling each other out Yeah, for like three quarters and then the fourth quarter, just both of them trying to go for the win. Right. Marvin Harrison kind of didn't really do anything this game, to be honest. Yeah, the I can't remember the corner that was on him, but he did a great job. He might get picked in like the first three rounds because of how well mm-hmm. he did against Marvin Harrison. Like it was man-to-man for most of the game. Yeah. Really impressive. Yeah. Um. So... Now we get that. So Ohio State, we said this was a big game for them going in, and uh, so they can they can still hang around um, for that playoff spot potentially. Yeah, even though the rankings don't really matter yet, they moved up to number four yeah. now. So yeah, they're in the top four. Yeah. Um, interesting enough, kind of. Washington gave up a lot of points to Cal. Um, I know it, it would it would seem like they gave up a lot of points. <laughs> But when you realize they were up forty two to like ten at half. Yeah. I I don't know. Like they they are like they are coming out and just destroying teams. Yeah. And then just taking it easy in second halves. Mm-hmm. I I I think it's kind of a where are they? They're number seven right now. They should be they should almost be number two. And yeah. I could I could see arguments for number one. No team is just absolutely destroying everybody. And playing pretty solid competition so far, like Washington. Right. Like, Michigan shouldn't be ahead of Washington right now. I can say that straight up. Yeah. They're much more impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, before we get to the other game of the week, um, we'll talk about some of the other Pac-12 teams beating themselves up. Uh, Utah beat UCLA. That was an ugly game. Yeah. Yeah. 14-7. to seven. Um, Both teams looked pretty solid. Dante um, Moore, it, going to Utah as a, as a true freshman starter, yeah. It is tough. Right. Really tough. Um LSU had a close one with Arkansas. Really fun game. Um kind of back and forth for a bit. Third quarter was big for LSU, but then Arkansas made another little little run at the end. Yeah. Um Alabama took took care of Ole Miss. That was kind of a that was a weird game. Ole Miss I, are I frauds. Yeah. I think a lot of late of Ole Miss fans are kind of jumping off of the Lane Kiffin train now. Yeah. And I can understand because, like, he can improve your program to a certain point, but uh, Lane t- hasn't shown he can go to that next level as a head coach, honestly. Yeah. Um, Washington State beat out Oregon State 38-35. The Pac-2 championship. And that was, 
That was another game that was a blowout until the fourth quarter. It, it was really, yeah, Oregon, it was really fun. Oregon State made it close. Cam Ward might be the most underrated quarterback in the country right now. Mm. He has like 14 touchdowns to no picks, and he's yeah. just bombing on everybody. Right. Really yeah. impressive. Yeah, Washington State's fun to watch. Um, Oklahoma beat Cincinnati 20-6. to That game was boring. I'll be honest. I watched a lot of Oklahoma, that game. Oklahoma-Cincinnati? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. That, Outside like, of a few plays Oklahoma hit to get in the red zone. Because that was in, it like. It was a snooze fest. That was in the, the, the multicast on YouTube TV that I was watching. And, uh, man, it was, it was just not fun to watch. Um, other than that, nothing really crazy. Except, I will say, out of the Florida game, Ricky Pearsall, that's the best catch I've ever seen. Fingertips. It's, it's better than Odell. Up, up, ah, uh, <laughs> I can't it say is. that. It is. The Watch degree of difficulty. Watch it back. The degree of difficulty is higher on Odell's because he's falling backwards. He's, jumping? he's falling backwards. He's not, he's not jumping. <coughs> Ricky, Ricky Pearsall was jumping. He's jumping sideways. But, but falling back and like not really knowing where you're falling back in the air and still finding the ball and catching it all fingertips. That That's great. Ricky Pearsall is one of the best college catches I've ever seen yeah. by far. It was impressive, but Od- Odell's was freaky. It might be, really freaky. It might be Odell for me. <laughs> um, and then the America's game of the week, Oregon and Colorado. I I hate to say that I'm happy about Listen, this game. It, it is unfortunate that America has split between two sides. Yeah, it, it of really being is. all in on Dion and waiting for the Dion stuff yeah. to stop. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm in the middle, like I am on most things. Like I I I'm shocked by how well Colorado has played so far. Yeah. But I also know they're not <coughs> they're not a great team. Right. <coughs> so this was going to happen eventually. Yeah. I'm a little bit more on I'm like the slight hater side. I'm I'm not going <laughs> to go all the way, but I was getting a little tired of it. Um but it was it was just kind of funny to watch. And I love I love and I hate cuz now it's making Oregon also seem a little arrogant that uh there was like all that pregame talk and Apparently, Oregon put out like a video of all the pregame stuff, and Colorado was messing with the O in the middle of the field. Like every, I feel like every team does that nowadays. Um, and then Colorado players mouth into the Oregon players, and I don't. It's just so it was funny to me the whole thing. Um, but Oregon beat them easily, forty-two to six. So the Colorado hype dies down. The one other thing that I'll say about the Colorado like faithful people or that bought in because of Dion, the only thing that kind of annoys me is when you talk all the smack before the game and then after the game, you get more like analytical and you're like, Yeah, well they were one and eleven last year. They they shouldn't have they shouldn't have been this hyped up anyway. Okay, but before the game you were hyping them up like they were something. So you gotta pick a side. If Dion you, being the coach, no matter where he is, the hype was going to be through the roof. Right. It just happens to be Colorado. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we've talked about it for a little while. Like realistically, we knew that they're they're not that good, but they have definitely made they're improvements. Excited. Yeah. Right. And which is impressive alone. Yeah. After how bad they were last year, that they're exciting. And I would say, who do they play next? They play USC. Who yeah. had issues with Arizona State? Yeah. They, their defense still is kind of very soft so now i would say they have they might have a better chance against the usc right. and Oregon. but the other thing is like i hope that usc doesn't go into that game lightly like the reason that oregon beat the brakes off of them is because there was so much hype going in and oregon didn't buy into it and they just they had they wanted to take it to them now they go play usc usc's like oh oregon smacked them around we should have no problem but you can't do that I will say that about Colorado. You can't take them lightly. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, because they put up points so quickly, possibly, that you could the game could get out of hand and you just have to be you have to be a little bit careful about it. Even with Caleb Williams. Um so yeah, I, I would say USC still has to be careful that they can't just think that they're also gonna roll over Colorado. They have to go into it just same way with Oregon, just Know that you can get the job done and do it. Um, yeah. So that'll, that'll be interesting to me. So uh, should I just mention a few teams before we move on? Yeah, go for it. A few teams. So Kansas is ranked 24th. They are 4-0 and in back-to-back seasons for the first time 
since 1913, Joey. Wow. 1913. I was not around then. Neither was I. <laughs> but that is incredible that Lance Leopold is already getting this much mm-hmm. out of Kansas, and they seem to be constantly improving on both ends of the ball. They play Texas this week. I don't think they can upset Texas at Texas. <laughs> this is a much improved Texas team that looks like they're finally for real. Yeah. But they could play. They could be interesting <coughs> for at least a half, maybe three quarters. Mm-hmm. You can't just, yeah, just not come off like that. Right. Uh, Missouri, you're 4-0. and Congratulations. Yeah. Around this time, you're usually like 2-2, two and two, <laughs> already looking like an average season. Yeah. They could still end up having an average season, but. The fact that they're already four and zero, and they beat a ranked Kansas State team, right? And they have some pretty good players, and they're good for good for Missouri. Yeah, they get a LSU in two weeks, so that'll be that, that'll be very interesting. Test. Uh, Duke is ranked seventeenth, mm-hmm. and they play against Notre Dame at home prime time this weekend. Should be a fun one. I don't expect them to beat Notre Dame, but I will be rooting for Duke. Yeah. Because I, I love when schools like that are good at just become good at football like Kansas. Yeah. I'm a fan of Mike Elko. I predicted Riley Leonard's rise, so I'm a fan of him. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I, I just like watching them play. And, um, <coughs> uh, yeah, I will say again, Washington should be in the top four, probably top two. People need to stop ignoring how great they've been. Yeah. It, it's almost still like Pac-12 like goggles that people have on. Mm-hmm. I, I just think people aren't paying that close of attention to how dominant they are. They have three legit NFL receivers. Yeah. Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk, and Jalen McMillan, all NFL players. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they have an NFL-level quarterback in Michael Penix. And on both the sides of the ball, they're just, they're just getting it done. Right. They're, they're not taking it easy on anybody. And I respect that more than what Michigan has done so far. How <coughs> inconsistent Ohio State has looked. I I just I respect Washington a ton right now. Yeah. Yeah, they deserve a lot of love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we said too, the Pac-12 still going to beat up on each other quite a lot as the season progresses. Um, so that that'll be interesting. We got Washington, USC, and Oregon all right there, and Utah, all right there, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, who does Michigan have this week? Michigan plays at Nebraska this week oh, okay. at 3.30. Snooze. Should, yeah, shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, that much of a game. Nebraska may stay in it for a quarter just because they're hyped up, mm-hmm. but they they just don't have the offense right now. Like They beat Louisiana Tech 28-14 to at home. They re- couldn't really score in the first half. I like how their guy uh, – he was their backup to come into the season. Now he's starting Heinrich Harburg, mm-hmm. not a name you see much in college football, Yeah, but he's a kid from Nebraska. He's like six, five, like two twenty, built and mobile can run. But yeah, the offense just isn't there yet. I'll expect Michigan's defense to pretty much take over the game. They probably won't score a lot either. It'll probably be another like 31 to like 10 game. Yeah. Like they're consistent, but I, I need to see them step up more as the season goes on. Right. Okay. And we move on to the NFL. Big game tomorrow. Big game. Big game. Um Yeah, the the Lions the Lions took care of bigness like a business, like a big boy team. Yeah, they did. They they yeah. There was no playing around from the Lions last Sunday. Was um, it eight total sacks or seven? I don't remember. I know they had six sacks from six different players, which yeah. is like the first time that's happened in forever. Two by Hutch in the second half, which was great to see. Yeah. They even got a little pressure from the defensive tackles, which was really great to see. Uh, Yeah. What are your other Jack thoughts? Jack Campbell got his first career sack, which was great. This Lions rookie class, Joey. Man. Do you think this this might look like the best Already through like three weeks that I've seen from a from a Lions rookie class, it's definitely we both we both knew they would be good players, but they're already just yeah, it's definitely their <laughs> best first round draft class. We found a lot of like late draft picks in this regime. It feels like Brad Holmes has found guys like Amon Ross St. Brown and all that. Um, 
we knew Penn Ice Duel was going to be a, a smash hit, but Aiden Hutchinson was kind of the, the safe bet as well. Yeah. But this year was a lot of unknowns. You've got four guys all flashing right now. Yeah. And like a lot of people have said, everybody is jealous of Brian Branch right now. He's one of yeah. the most efficient DBs in the league right now. His, his, how he plays on run defense is more impressive yeah. than anything to me. He was meeting B. John Robinson in the backfield yeah, and uh, getting him down. I will say I'm a hater of the mouth guard in the helmet. It, looks, it was strange. It looks like a popsicle yeah, stick. Sticking out the yeah, – um, it's, it's a choice. Apparently he has a full reason for all of it, but he doesn't like it because it doesn't stay in his mouth. Okay, well, why does it have to be on your helmet? Like, I, I don't know. It's just weird. Um, but that's such a doesn't, minor. It doesn't matter when you're playing like that. Yeah, yeah right. Um, Jack Campbell, I think as he's getting more time, is looking really good. I got to talk about Sam Laporta. He is leading tight ends yes. right now. He is a in catches and you know who's second? Yards. Second? TJ Hawkinson. That is hilarious. Take that, TJ. Listen, TJ just wanted to leave the Lions so he could start winning. So he could start winning. Yeah. He's 0 and 3. Good job. <laughs> Good job, TJ. Gosh. Um, but no, Sam Laporta is great. He's very similar. He, he feels similar to Monroe St. Brown where he's just he finds a way to get open. He's tough with the run and he just looked really good. Um, Jameer Gibbs, I think he he answered a decent amount of questions yeah. that we had from last week. I was even, like I said, I was concerned a little bit about how the work it would go. He had 17 carries for 80 some yards. Not bad. Nothing for crazy. A first start. Yeah. yeah, nothing crazy, but it was solid. Uh, he looked good in some runs. I didn't like that they didn't throw him the ball though because of that. And the them running him up the middle constantly. I don't yeah. understand. Get him outside and throw him the ball. Yeah. yeah, and like I said last week, I wanted to see him put him shoot, in space, shoot gaps more often up the middle. But I agree. Like there is a certain point where you have to use him to his strengths. Yeah. I wanted to see him with some more halfback dives, and they did that a little bit. But then they they got a little overuse of it. Yeah. And I agree. They need to bounce some some stuff outside. Um, David Montgomery. I don't think he's gonna play. They said he has a chance to, but I would rather just sit him another week. Um, the Packers, I don't know where their injuries are at. I'll see if I can find it. Christian Watson is supposed to come back, I think. That's what I've heard, but he has. But they also said that he hasn't been medically cleared, and that was yesterday. Okay. So that might I heard be, Aaron Jones might be back too. But yeah, I, I don't yeah know the, that's also up in the air. Um, I don't think we've really gotten full practice reports today. I know that David Bakhtiari is supposed to be back, so that kind of stinks. Um, he'll be – he's up against Aiden, right? That'll be – because he's the left uh, – is Bakhtiari the left side? I don't – I'm not, sure. I'm not I think, sure. I think he's been playing left side for them. That would make the most sense. Anyway. Um, Jair Alexander, I don't know where, where he's at. He's, they say he's questionable as well. Uh, so I would like him not to play, <laughs> just to open up Josh yeah, Reynolds. Pretty much, it, it's they're all questionable. Everybody we've listed. Yeah, yeah. But then Kirby Joseph is questionable. Taylor Decker, uh, David Montgomery. Yeah, it's just so many questionable, questionable yeah. players. I've heard more positives about Taylor Decker for this week, but um, who really knows? There's also a chance that Emmanuel Mosley finally plays. That would be a uh, big help. Yeah, let's get Jerry Jacobs less time on the field. <laughs> Uh, Play him in spots, please. Man, remember when he was everybody's like preseason darling? Listen, he was like a fan favorite. It's preseason for the for a reason. Like everybody loves Jerry <coughs> Jacobs. Where did that go? Um, yeah. So Lions are playing the Packers tomorrow night at Lambeau. <coughs> Gonna be a tough one, just because Lambeau is a tough place to play. But they sh- they they're favored to win. In we didn't game. say who won picks last week yet. Oh yeah, we've been just going on about the Lions. <laughs> yeah. Um, you won picks last week. Okay. You had what did you end up with? Eleven, because you picked Cincinnati and Joe Burrow did play. I yeah. wrote that down that if he didn't, we'd switch. Um. And what was the other big one that I think kind of messed me up? I picked the Jets. That okay. was a tough one. Yeah. But I did get Houston right, so that that was nice. a fun one. And you got Cleveland. I had Tennessee, and Tennessee looked awful. Uh, so you had 11. I had 9, which puts us right back to basically not even, but I'm up 29 to 28. Okay. 
So we're moving on. Uh, the one other thing that I will say about the Lions before we actually make our pick and move on. The Lions, once again, proved they are potentially a top five run defense. They stopped Bijan Robinson, and nobody has run well against the Lions since, like, I think it's like week 14 of last year or something like that, yeah. which is awesome to see. If they can just get their pass defense up a little bit, <laughs> that's the only thing that makes me nervous because Atlanta doesn't throw the ball. Um, Green Bay will, so that'll be interesting to see. But Lions should be favored. They're at Lambeau. I can't go against them. I'm picking the Lions. Listen, I, I'm start the week off right. I'm not a Lions fan, but I'm like a closeted Lions fan because I'm rooting for them to win, and I'm kind of using my heart. It, I, it, it's complicated. I'm picking the Lions. <laughs> it Perfect. is very complicated. That's what we like to hear. Um, Jacksonville at Atlanta, but technically it's not anywhere. It's in Germany. This is, this, a, is this a Germany game? Or yeah. Is this the London I think this, yeah. I, I don't know which country. <laughs> I'm not sure. I have to look. But uh, Falcons, again, coming off the loss to the Lions, their first loss of the season. Jaguars, wow. They lost to Houston. I mean, Houston. It's in Wembley, so in London. Okay. That's what I thought. I, I was like, I think the Germany game is later like next week or something. Um, Jaguars are a weird team. Calvin Ridley has struggled the last two games. This game is hard to uh, yeah, yeah. understand. There's going to be jet lag. That's always going to be a trouble. I don't know when they got there. I mean, I'm sure they're, they've been there or they're getting there today, most likely, uh, to practice the rest of the week. I don't know how to feel about these teams. The Jags are in a rut, but I still believe they will end up being a good team. I'm going Jaguars. Okay. I guess this is a good enough game that I'll take Atlanta. Atlanta's just one of those weird teams that if you fall into, into their spell of running the ball and bore you to death, I don't know how you react. Um, Do you think the the Falcons start Taylor Heineke eventually? Uh, they might. I think just, he, would, he would be doing more than I would think just like Raiders fan doing. pressure or something. Um, I saw one funny, funny thing is people were talking about the Falcons – should trade for Justin Fields so that uh, they can feel even worse about Kyle Pitts. <laughs> he was Listen, sad. I feel bad for Kyle Pitts. I don't even like joking. About he, and now there's rumors that they were shopping Kyle Pitts, but they've turned it all down. They said that okay. that wasn't true. You draft it, him top five. They do said there's with them. And, okay. They said there's no way that they would do that, but there was also rumors that the Cowboys were talking to them or something. So I don't know. Ridiculous. Um, Dolphins at the Bills. Funny Dolphins if, put up 70 last week, oh Joey. Oh, boy. They look like a team on Madden. Yeah. They don't look real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Devon A-Chain, first game starting, 208 on the ground. Yeah. Plus, like, 60 receiving. Mm -hmm. Raheem Mostert, four touchdowns. What is that? Yeah, I don't know. Video game what numbers. Is, Tyreek Hill still in, putting up insane. his thing. Mike White comes in and throws one to Robbie Chosen. Yeah. Robbie Chosen. <laughs> he was they elevated like from name. the practice squad that day, too. Because of the Jalen Waddle injury. Listen, this game. That could be fun. Uh, it's in Buffalo. Yeah. What's, what's the weather looking like? It's supposed to be what's nice. The weather? 62 oh, degrees. Boy. Partly cloudy. This just might be up and down the field again. The over-under is 54. <laughs> just 50. Oh, my God. Just 54. I'm yeah. betting the over hard on that one. You think so? I don't know. The Bills defense is way better than the Broncos defense. But Miami. They, yeah. They're just, yeah. Yeah. But I, like, I think the Bills Mike are a little McDaniel more Mike McDaniel is an offensive mastermind. Yeah. Listen, though, that no-look shovel pass, mm -hmm. that was tough. That was that, that disrespectful. Was I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's a, it's a, how's, how, how's it disrespectful? I really wish that Nathaniel Hackett <laughs> would just talk some crap to <laughs> Sean Payton. That would have been so great. I wish the Jets <laughs> were a little bit better. I'm picking the Dolphins. I'm picking the Bills. I think I think people are going to be so hyped up on the Dolphins, and may, maybe this this would be the game that would put me over the edge. That I okay. think keeping them under thirty is just you have to have like a perfect defensive game plan. Yeah, because Mike McDaniel is just throwing stuff at everybody mm -hmm. that they just can't see coming. Yeah, but and they keep getting Tyreek Hill open. <laughs> right. I like. I don't see how you would stop him. Yeah. I mean, we saw. We saw the Patriots slow down Tyreek Hill, so it's definitely it's definitely possible. 
I guess. But yeah, I'll go the opposite on that one. That's a good toss up game. And the battle of the winless teams. <laughs> the Broncos, who just gave up 70, are going. If you're, not, if you're not watching this game, going to Chicago. Are you a real fan? You got to tune in for this one. Oh my gosh. I just realized that game. This game is on CBS. Dolphins Bills is also on CBS. We are probably going to get Broncos Bears <laughs> locally. Let's do it. And with the <laughs> Lions, do it. With the Lions playing on Thursday, I can't. Oh my gosh! I hope we get Ravens Browns instead. <laughs> oh no! Give us Broncos Bears. Oh, prime no. time football. Oh my gosh! Let's do it. I. Whew. This is weird to say after everything that happened last year, but I feel bad for Russell Wilson right now. He's not the problem at all. Like, he's not playing bad football, and they're getting destroyed. Yeah. They're just not a good football team. Yeah. I, I they, think they, they got a lot of figure out. They're not using Marvin Mims a lot. They're, well, he's one of the main guys making plays. I know, whenever but, they, they target but they, him. Don't, they still don't use him. Like, he's, he's hardly used, but in his touches, he's been yeah. great. Uh, I feel like they need to up Javante Williams' touches. I think he's looked pretty healthy. It seems like he's just not getting much room to run. Like, yeah, there there are problems. In I'm not, I'm not every watching aspect. closely on Bronco <laughs> Broncos games. I I just watch highlights. And yeah, it always right. it doesn't look it looks hard. Mm -hmm. Everything they do looks kind of difficult. Yeah, but then on the other hand, the Bears they look like if, they, we can't put into words how they don't look like an NFL team. You know, when a lot of people joke about teams that look like dumpster fires. The Bears actually look Listen, like a dumpster if you, fire. If you took the Seattle, the St. Louis Battlehawks from the XFL oh, God. and moved them up to the NFL, do you think that this is no. how they would look? No, we're not doing that. We're not We're not doing that. You Are you telling me Chicago doesn't look like an XFL team? They look bad, but you remember when we were trying to do that with Kentucky and the Sixers when the Sixers were bad? This is completely different. I don't know. This isn't the same argument. We're not saying Kentucky can hang with the NBA team. We're saying Chicago was as bad as the XFL team. <laughs> I, I can't go that far. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're, I'll, I'll they're say not they're competitive, getting, Joey. They're getting close. They but. are not a competitive team. Yeah. But I don't That's, know. Again, I don't know if it's the players necessarily. It's not all Matt Eberflus. He's not doing much, no. but it's not all him. No, but they just look like a mess in general everywhere. Like DJ Moore dropping open deep passes. Yeah. Chase Claypool just barely trying. Justin Fields isn't. That doesn't have much to do with coaching. Isn't letting him eat. I don't know. Justin Fields is basically saying, I can't read defenses at a high level, yeah. so they're not, just let me run around. They're not calling up plays that also help him out, so it's like this weird back and forth. Like There's just a disconnect on that team. I feel bad for Bears fans, man. That whole team. Having to deal with this. Yeah. They they had hype during the offseason. Mm -hmm. With all that being said, I'm taking the Broncos. <laughs> One and three. Don't Are you taking the bit? Don't you? I, Take the Bears. Do it. I think I'm going to take the Bears. <laughs> yes. You believe in Luke Getze and Eberflew. Say I'm it. Just, I'm just hoping Denver's defense just keeps doing terrible. I, I want you to say Ryan Poles made good decisions this offseason. Please say it. What if What if the Bears put up like 30 on the Broncos? <laughs> Could you imagine? Let's ride. Joey is a Bears fan. No. That is what, that's what you just declared. Okay. Broncos. Just, I, I need the NFC North to start doing a little bit of something because now, like, the Lions... I want the Lions to run away with the division, but people are starting to just talk badly about the NFC North in general. So, we need them to show a little bit of something. When the NFC East was the NFC least, everybody talked about it. So, yeah. this is going to happen to certain divisions. Um, Coming up next, the Ravens and the Browns. Your team is a... Divisional matchup. Your team is... They're not bad, but they're not like... No, they haven't been convincing. Yeah. like I, I don't know what the issue is completely. Dropping that game last week to the Colts was That wasn't bad. good. That wasn't... Yeah. 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 Like, I, I don't know. I just, I just don't know with the Ravens. Yeah, I'm hoping that it's they're still figuring out this new offense. I like Cleveland more than Baltimore right now. Yeah. But I'm going to take Baltimore. Okay. I'm going to take Baltimore. I can't root against them. Um, you can. I can't. I can't. <laughs> you can. It's you you don't the, have to stick by them every that, week. It's not that point. They're not going 17 and 0. We're not to that point. <laughs> I mean, they can already. They already lost one. So. I know. Yeah. Um, Bengals at the Titans. This might be boring. Bengals. 
Once again, I have no faith in anything Tennessee does. The Bengals look so awful on Monday night. They still don't look great, but at least they showed some signs of life. Like Luckily, the, the Rams looked 10 times worse. Like, Dax Hill is emerging, and they got yeah. some guys that can make plays on defense. Yeah. And nobody can trust the Tennessee offense. So Right. Yeah. Tennessee's defense, their run defense is really good, but their pass defense is awful. So, Jamar Chase probably will have a day. Um. Yeah, I can't go with Tennessee. They're just not in a bad, a good place right now. You went with the Bears. You can go with Tennessee. No, <laughs> no. Okay, it's a different matchup. Rams at the Colts. I'm Rams, going with Indianapolis. Rams looked really good the first two weeks. And Shane Steichen has them. Those dudes playing just like smart football. Yeah, I think the Colts uh, are good. Yeah. I think the Rams' offensive line looks like trash again. So they might just get sacked seven, eight more times. Do you think Gardner Minshew could le- reach, like, Fitz Magic levels of... Yeah, I, I think he's... Ca- just a cult hero as a backup yeah, quarterback? Yeah. I hope Anthony Richardson comes back, though. I do, too. Um, I don't know what his status is going to be this week. Um, and the Jonathan Taylor stuff is all up in the air again. That more Listen, stuff keeps coming out this week. Zach Moss looked good. Yeah. <laughs> he looked pretty good. Right. But um, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with Jonathan Taylor when he comes back. And the real MVP was, listen, Matt Gay, 5 of 5. Yeah. Three kicks over 50. Mm-hmm. Real stuff. I'm going to go with the Rams. I think it's a, a decent enough toss-up game. I'm a little nervous after Monday night. The first two games, like I said, Rams looked pretty decent. How many catches did Puka Naku have? Uh, only like game? six or something. Does he go back over 10 this game? I Because they're going to target him at I think so, because the Colts are going to be more pressured so i think they're going to do more short throws i like julius brents the young db mm. the Colts got from kansas state i like him a lot yeah so this is a weird game um bucks at the saints famous is Jameis. Derek out? i think so it, it doesn't look like he was trending in the right direction but they don't know for sure <sighs> Jameis against his old, old versus team baker this would be what this would have been an incredible college football <laughs> yeah Match off, match up in like 2016, right. Florida State versus Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Chucking the ball. Especially if you think about their offenses too, like if these guys turned into actually good quarterbacks, having like, I mean, Mike Evans and Baker have a pretty good connection, but like chucking it to Chris Olave, Mike Evans, Rashid Shahid, like it would be fun. It's not going to be that fun, but <laughs> this is a toss up. Both teams have decent defenses. Yeah, like, it's in New Orleans, so yeah, I'm picking the Saints. I'll tell you that. I just just think, to go opposite, I'll take the Bucks. Okay, yeah, because I I wanted to go New Orleans. I actually picked New Orleans in my Survivor League, which is terrifying. New Orleans probably should have lost to Tennessee Week One, and well, they were at home. New Orleans has <coughs> had every game be like three points or less in every except game. for the Panthers game, which they, it was close for most of the game, and then it was ended by like ten points. No. Oh, that, that was like 26-16. No, that was their close. It was 2017. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Titans game was 16-15, 2017 to the Panthers, 18-17 loss to the That's Packers. That's ridiculous. Yeah, give me the Bucks. <laughs> so, one-point games every time, basically. Even with Derek Carr, they've just been mediocre. Yeah. Uh, Washington at Philly. Sam Howe had a tough game last week. He had a real tough game. Yeah. Uh, give, me the, give me the Eagles. Yeah, me too. Um. Vikings and Panthers, the other winless matchup. The Vikings feel like they've got butter on their hands. <laughs> they have fumbled so many times between multiple different players. Listen, they, they, I, I don't know what to say about these two teams. Uh, the Vikings. I saw this, uh, the stat today. Kirk Cousins is on pace for 6,000 yards. <laughs> 51 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and zero wins. <laughs> Sounds like the quarterback the New York Jets need. Am I right? It, it's making more and more sense. Zach Wilson to Minnesota. <laughs> if Hey, if you lose to the Panthers this week, I think you do it. I think this is the game. If they lose to the Panthers and they go 0-4, trade Kirk Cousins. I'd agree. I'm going with the Vikings. I, I'll go with the Panthers just, okay. just because. Yeah. Let's have complete turmoil. Pittsburgh at Houston. CJ Stroud, the best I rookie. I almost want to pick Houston. CJ Stroud, but the best rookie? I guess quarterback. The best rookie overall. Quarterback. 
I don't think he can be the the best rookie. I feel like TJ TJ won a six X already. Mm. He might do some really unfair things to to CJ Stroud. Yeah, and make him make some bad mistakes. Yeah, their offensive line is still banged up. Yeah, I'm I'm going Pittsburgh. Okay, they made just enough plays to beat uh, the Raiders. I'll go with Houston. I'll. I think they're just a sneaky good team. It's probably going to be a weird game because Pittsburgh offense is still struggling. Uh, Raiders at the Chargers. Brandon Staley tried to lose it again. What he did tried. I tell you? He tried. Justin Herbert is the only quarterback to not have a turnover, I believe. So you got Brandon Staley versus the coach. I don't. I'm not even going to say the Raiders coach's name. He doesn't deserve it. He's that much of a disgrace right now. Oh, boy. Yeah. This is the battle of coaches right here. Yeah. Um, Who messes it up in the end? It's a home game for the Chargers. Well, the Raiders might are going to go with either Brian Hoyer or Aiden O'Connell. I'm taking the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah. I'm going with the Chargers team. Yeah. Raiders down to a backup quarterback. Um, Chargers just look like a more complete team. Austin Eckler might be back. I don't know. He's still kind of up in the air. New England at... Dallas. <laughs> I want to take New England so bad. I mean, Dallas just but lost to Arizona. I'm I'm going to go Dallas. Yeah, comeback game. Yeah. Josh, Mac Jones isn't as athletic as Josh Dobbs. He can't move around and make plays like that. Yeah, I think we have enough difference. Eh, well, yeah, we, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ready. <laughs> Are you sure you're not ready? Yeah, I got at least like one more. Opposite game I can choose. Um, Arizona at San Francisco. Arizona. San Fran. uh, yes, I agree. It's impressive. But Arizona what? has played tough yeah. in all of their games. It is impressive that they've played like that in Chicago. is so horrible. I'm curious if they can, if Arizona, no, they're, they're not going to be good enough. Their division's too hard. Like, when do they bring back Kyler? Because there's been talks about like, him sitting out the whole season. I don't know. It'll be interesting. 49ers look like one of the best teams right now. Yeah. Chiefs and Jets. Oh, it's a sad Sunday night game. Just just put it down. Just just write it. <laughs> what if I told you? Zach Wilson outplayed Pat Mahomes. <laughs> Joe Flacco signs tomorrow. <laughs> They signed Trevor Simeon to the to the practice I squad know. today, so he's thought, most likely starting soon. I thought they already said they elevated him, but they should oh get boy. Trevor ready quickly. It's bad. And then our Monday night game could be sort of exciting if Saquon comes back. Seattle at the New York Giants. Give me the Giants. Hey, that's who I was going to pick. I'll take Seattle. Though. You know why I'm taking the Giants? Because they're at home. You want to know? Seattle's defense is bad because Tyrod Taylor might be starting. Really? I did he's not. The, he's the he's the Giants' backup. You didn't know that? No, I know that. But you think they're gonna like sit Daniel Jones? I don't know why I thought Daniel Jones was hurt. I don't <laughs> know why. Something in my head said Daniel Jones was hurt. <laughs> he's not hurt. What am I? What I am thought I talking you had, about? I thought you had something I didn't <sighs> know about. I apologize for that. I don't know why I thought Daniel Jones was hurt. I'm still going with the Giants though, just because. Okay. I love that you have faith, more faith in Tyrod than Daniel Jones. <laughs> I think Daniel Jones has just... I was just saying it because you're such a Tyrod fan. and I yeah. Wanted to, yeah. No, I like that. Um, <coughs> I think the Giants are better than that they've looked. I don't think it's all Daniel Jones' fault, but they are not helping themselves either at the same time. I guess I'll go Seattle, though, like I said, to be opposite. Um... Anything else that you uh, could think of before we uh, get out of here? Uh, I don't think so. All right. Like I said, yeah. Lions, big divisional game tomorrow. It's not a must win, but they could make a statement, take over the division with a win over the Packers, who a lot of people are liking what the Packers are doing early on in the season. So if they can stop them, knock them off, take sole possession of the division, with the Bears 0-3, the Vikings 0-3, they could have a very comfortable lead early on in the season. Let's get it done. Because then we have 
Carolina the following. And we need a revenge game against Carolina. And then I think we have the Bucks. So we could go on a little streak here. Go Lions. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Joey Tysick is officially a Chicago Bears fan. He made it official on this podcast. Um, And that's about it.